Please, let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Has someone ever broken your heart? I am not ashamed to say it ever happened to me in my boyhood. As I told you months ago, I saw that poetry does wonderful things since I was a teenager. The prophet Jeremiah made use of the most sublime language poetry. Well, you probably won't appreciate the beautiful poetry in the following verses. But believe me, there is poetry in Hebrew here that go lost a bit when translated into a different language. So please feel with your soul the broken heart of God. I will read verses 2 to 4 in the New International Version. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you love me and follow me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured here, here were held guilty, and disaster overtook them, declared the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, you descendants of Jacob, all you clans of Israel. Please pay close attention to the following verses. And remember, it's our Almighty God with a broken heart who is expressing. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me? What they strayed so far from me? They follow worthless idols and become worthless themselves. It's like when someone in love says to his or her beloved that he or she is going to leave. Tell me, what I did to make you stop loving me? What was my fault? Tell me why. God says I was always standing with my people. Instead, my beloved one cheated on me with idols. This is a very dramatic passage. That is the truth. And you still think the Bible is boring? God, with a broken and suffering heart, continues saying through Jeremiah, I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you enter, you defeat my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests did not say, where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that do not profit. God brought his people into fertile and through the leadership of Moses, but the people of God contaminated and they filled the land instead of taking care of it. God does not like that we pollute the planet, devastate the forest, pollute the water, and harm the ecosystems. God continues in his reproaches. The priests did not fulfill their function to bring people closer to God. The judges went astray. The leaders of the people rebelled against God. And even the prophets served Baal, the idols, instead of the one true God. What a shame for the people of God. Although our generation, I think, is even worse than that generation, it would be best if you did not lose God is not talking about the pagan nations, but his people. So, this brings me to a sensitive issue that few ministers address today, 
I am not going to address that topic more profoundly today either. So Sunday, I will do. But today I want to open a very controversial topic. I invite you to reflect. Can a person who is saved through faith in Christ and accepted Christ as his or her savior, can that person lose his or her salvation? Yes or no? What do you think? Is possible to lose salvation? Yes or no? Okay? Please don't rush to respond to that question. Think it very well. I would not be guided solely by radio and TV preachers to regulate my criteria fully. I am going to tell you something important. All preachers, whether they want to admit it or not, have a particular theological tendency. And I have it too. And when I say, say every one of the preachers, it means every one hundred percent, whether they are aware of it or not, and it's something unavoidable. Many local churches, pastors, and preachers say, "I don't pay attention to theology. That's human. I only follow the Bible." What does that church pastor or preacher mean? In this church, this pastor is of a fundamentalist tendency. I am going to tell you something else. I know we are well intentioned, but still the truth is that the vast majority of evangelical radio and TV preachers belong to a greater or lesser extent to the school called Calvinism. But I am going to tell you very clearly that the historic Methodist Church follows an Arminian Wesleyan theology. I am going to tell you another important thing. All Christians claim to base their faith on the Bible. The critical point, what are we doing with the Bible? Are we doing exegesis or exegesis? Exegesis means to lead out in Greek, while exegesis means reading into the text. Two or more preachers can read the same Bible and say very different things to the congregation. When we study the Bible using exegesis, we are trying to extract God's message. When I repeat, when we study the Bible using exegesis, we are trying to extract from the Bible the God message. On the contrary, when we use exegesis, we only use the Bible to try to prove the ideas or our ideologies that we already have. And the reality is that the political parties how the preachers who speak what suits them. So please be very careful who you listen to and who you support with your offerings. So what do you think? Salvation can be lost or not? Think about it. We will not address it today, but we'll give you clues. And I already gave you an important, important hint. Jeremiah, the God-inspired prophet, teaches that those who begin well but do not persevere in the ways of God will be justly reproached. Those who abandon the Christian faith, op faith oppose it more than those who never knew it. When two believer chooses to willingly and consistently turn his or her back on God, they are committing apostasy. Only a former believer can become an apostate. 
An unbeliever cannot become an apostate. God to the prophet says, Therefore, once more I accuse you, says the Lord, I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look, send together and examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods? Even though they are not gods, but my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked. Be utterly desolate, says the Lord. God's people have fallen into apostasy. Apostasy is the opposite of conversion. It's when having enjoyed the blessing of God and having experienced the benefits of salvation, I repeat, voluntarily and progressively, the former believers tore their backs on God and denied Him. Apostasy is real. All Christians, sooner or later, have to face that real danger. That's why God sends the Holy Spirit to move our conscience. But if you sin and become a cynic, be careful. It could be that you are losing spiritual sensitivity. As a diabetic, I suffer from neuropathy in my feet. The problem is that there are areas in my feet that I, I have lost sensitivity. And I can often fall. In fact, as I said you two days ago, I fall in the street. Yes, so likewise, cynical sinners suffer from a spiritual neuropathy for which they sleep and fall and begin to be indifferent to spiritual life. Jeremiah's prophecy says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and look out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that can hold the water. Please realize that God says, My people, He's not talking about the unbelievers. His people have committed two evils. First, they have forsaken me. Second, they do our cisterns for themselves. The people of God have forgotten God. How ironic. We try to replace what is harmful with other things, with idols. It does not surprise me that today I see more signs of the presence of God in people who are good but are not believers that among many call themselves Christians. Is it true? Is my job to say? Many Christians trust more in their own strength and intelligence than in God. Christians dig wells and make sisters to try to accumulate God's blessings. But Jesus Christ is the source of living water. The only one that can quench thirst it is flowing water. It is living water. When you try to store it, it rots. We must let ourselves be guided by the action of the Holy Spirit. Drink from the water of Christ, the water that flows and not a stagnant water that sooner or later will rot. And now let me ask you another question. It happens to you that you receive blessings from God. As you know, God's gifts are spiritual, also in hell. There are also bonds with your family and other people. They are also material and many times reflected in the economy. I clarify that we don't believe in what some people call prosperity theology. But God's blessings are also economical. But you see that false blessings disappear? 
that they go like water between your fingers? Hmm. They don't last. Jeremiah chapter 2 says that it is because your cisterns are broken. First, you have made a cistern for the wrong purposes because you must trust in the living water of God and not in your broken cisterns. Yes, your well has leaks. So, what will be the secret for the Christian life? Dream of the water of Christ. And He will give you even more incredible blessings that you are trying to accumulate with your broken cisterns. Grace in Christ. Grace in Christ. I repeat, grace in Christ is compared to water from a fountain. It's a cooling and refreshing, cleansing and making fruitful to live in water. Because it quickens dead sins. Revives drooping saints. Supports and maintains a spiritual life and issues in eternal life. And is ever flowing, ever flowing. To forsake this home time of living water is the first evil. This is done when the people of God neglect his word and commandments. They dug out broken cisterns that could hold no water. Such is the world and the things in it. Such are the inventions of men when follow on dependent on. Therefore, with the purpose of heart, let us cleave to the Lord only. Whither else shall we go? Beloved sinners in Christ, how prone are we going to forego to the consolations of the Holy Spirit for the wordless joys of worldly pleasures? Please, let us pray. Our good Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our foolishness and transgressions. We recognize that like Judah and Israel, we do not give you enough honor and glory for our successes and blessings. We attribute them to our intelligence, skill, studies, and sagacity. Forgive us, eternal Father. Please repay our wealth and sisters for both material and spiritual blessings. But above all, help us to understand that you are the one who gives the spring of living water. Only you provide the living water that will quench our thirst. We pray in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son. Amen.